guys can hear it? This song is to wake you up. This song has everything. This song has a brief history of American aviation, including Charles A. Lindbergh's flight over the Atlantic and, and the Wright brothers. It's got guest appearances by uh, Plato, Shakespeare, Einstein, J. Edgar Hoover. It's got uh, totally fabricated quotations from famous people in history, and it's got love. Wilbur and Orville were hanging round the shack, passing round a big old barn. Wilbur says, Orville, you know our name may be right, but lately I've been feeling like we got it all wrong. It's like Plato would have told you. If the cat was still around, brother, you can't get nowhere with your feet stuck to the ground. So in the words of Edgar Hoover of the FBI, reach for the sky, I gotta fly, I gotta fly, little birdies do it, baby, why can't I? We might not make it, we might even die, but no one lives forever, but I got to fly. Now Charles A. Lindbergh tells his sweet wife one morning, he says, Honey pie, I'm a heading to France. Wife says, Chuck, you got some explaining to do. And Linda says, I know now, darling, just give me a chance. I'm like a half of Fitzgerald in that song she used to sing. But -do -do -ba -do -ba. I love Paris in the spring. And to paraphrase Mr. Albert Einstein's constant refrain, the shortest path between two points is a plane. Stop and let that one sink in for a minute. That's a good one. <laughs> I gotta fly, I gotta fly, mm, I gotta get myself way up in the sky. I might not make it, might even die, but no one lives forever, baby, I gotta fly. Darling, sweet darling, the stars are all shining and the lightning bugs is doing that thing. And don't you think it's maybe time for you and me, baby, to take a chance and see if this romance can take wings? It's like a Frank D. Roosevelt told me last year, the only thing that you got to fear, my dear, is fear. And if I may quote Shakespeare from some sonnet somewhere, when you kiss me, baby, I feel lighter than air. We gotta fly, we gotta fly, we gotta get ourselves way up in the sky. We might not make it, might even die, but no one lives forever, baby. We gotta fly, I said, and no one lives forever, baby. We gotta fly. Here's my second favorite agricultural joke of all times. There's a guy walking through the country, sees a farmyard with a three-legged pig, says to the farmer, what's the deal with the three-legged pig? Farmer says, mister, you got to understand. One time, little Timmy fell down the well. That pig, he came and ran and found me out in the fields and he oinked so eloquently that I understood what was happening. And I raced back and saved little Timmy's life. And the guy says, well, okay, but what about the, the, the leg? Mister, you don't understand. One time the baby was crawling across the highway and that pig, he dashed out there and at risk of his own life, he picked her up by her little diaper, dragged her to safety, and what's more, he changed that diaper, dragged her upstairs, put her in her crib, and covered her up so she could take a nap. The guy says, it's great pig, but the, the leg, mister, you don't understand. One time the house caught fire and he ran into the house at risk of his own life. He picked up grandma. He dragged
dragged her out, and then he ran back into the burning building so he could get her robe so she could feel decent while waiting for the fireman to arrive. I says, yeah, but what about the leg? He says, mister, you don't understand. You got a pig like that. You got a pig like that. You don't eat him all at once. <laughs> Little piggies see the world through hopeful little eyes. Nobody tells them about bacon. They think they're living in a piggy paradise. Guess I don't have to tell you just how badly they're mistaken. One day they're laughing all they're playing in the sun. Next time you catch up with them, they're in a bun. Oh, poor little piggies. It's all just so unkind. It's unkind. It's unkind. It's so unkind. Now little piggies teach us all a lesson sad but true. Though they may not intend to. You know, it's dog out, dog eat dog out there, and the dogs is <laughs> it's me and you. One day you're riding high, boy. Next day you on the menu. Maybe it's your best friend, your boss, your neighbor, your wife. You turn your back that little second, and uh, out comes a knife. And just like little piggies, I think you're going to find it's unkind, unkind, it's so unkind. I graduated from school for maybe 10 years and then you know these alien creatures invaded our house and I'm sure you many of you have been through this and it just kind of put the kibosh on everything so I've just started writing songs again after 20 years of not and so that's what I'm playing you here because you know yeah this is supposed to be a nostalgic look back at the things we did before but you know we're not done yet. Here, here. This is my wife's favorite among the, the new songs that I've come. 
I wrote this song the way you're never supposed to write a song. I wrote the first line and then I just stared at it until I could figure out what it was coming from. Here's the first line, ready? Tommy's old girlfriend used to call him an asshole. She'd get ticked off and throw things at his head. Ashtrays and coffee cups and one time a brick. And if she'd had a better arm, he might be dead. They'd fight and fight until the neighbors called the cops. And then they'd make up till they called the cops again. <laughs> When she left, he thought he'd find someone just like her. He still wants to, but now he wonders when. Cause you know, he admires a girl with some fire. No dewy-eyed babies, no ice-water ladies. Just give him a girl with some fire. Tommy's old girlfriend had this eight-year-old daughter. She thought Tommy was a tool But catch it in his boots and peed on his toothbrush and threw tantrums when he picked her up at school Tommy's old girlfriend never did one thing to stop her She said, Tommy man you know that's how she is. Tommy just shrugs it off. Kid's just a kid, you know. And the truth is that he wishes she was his. Cause you know he admires a girl with some fire. No dewy hide babies, no ice water ladies. Just give him a girl with some fire. Tommy's old girlfriend moved to Winslow, Montana. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Works as a waitress while she looks for something better. But that something better's kind of hard to find. Goes out with cowboys, they're polite, they treat her gentle. But they got her close to giving up on men. She thinks of Tommy, and not often, but just sometimes. She wishes she could see that fool again. Cause you know, he admires.
can't be real here. I, how are you guys holding up? I, I, I could either play one more and you know get us on to the finale, or I could play two. What do you, what are you feeling like? Play one, and we'll see. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> There, are you running for president as a Democrat this year? I'm a libertarian, actually. Well, we consider switching parties. We need a man like you in Washington. <laughs> this is not a new song. I actually played this the last time we all got together, and, and John Bachman wanted me to play it, so I'm going to play it. Did you write, did you write this song also? I did. And Vicky wanted it too. Yes. See, I I could conceive of telling John that mind his own business, but Vicky, no. <laughs> My wise ass son tells me this is the best capo made, but I can't make it work. Uh, let me see if I can get this to work, and if not, I'll just sing it lower, I guess. Helps to retune back, it, back to an E instead of an F. This is a is a cowboy song. Years ago in Chicago, a good friend of mine named Art Theme, who maybe some of you have even heard because he had a pretty good reputation. I heard him play this absolutely perfect cowboy song. And I said, damn, I gotta have a cowboy song like that. Now I could have just learned the damn thing that he was playing, but you know, that would be too easy and I would have had to memorize the words, which I'm never good at. While sleeping by the fire in the plains of Idaho, I woke up with a start and saw the ghost of Thirsty Joe, still bleeding where John Hannah's bullet caught him through the chest, and he begged me to avenge his death and to let him take his rest. As a good man, I believe. Got notches on my pistol. I got aces up my sleeve. And I'd rather face the dying and the burying below than be haunted in my sleeping by the ghost of Thirsty Joe. It was two or three weeks later that we brought the herd to town. I stepped into the bar room and I bought the boys around. When in walked old John Hannah, I turned to face him slow. And I said, I brought you a message from your old friend, Thirsty Joe. Postal man, I guess. Where the scars are twenty times when I was second best. But hand come tomorrow when the sun begin to show. I reckon you'll be dying to please old Thirsty Joe.
next morning out on Main Street while the dawning light was dim I heard a step behind me and reckoned it was him John Hannah have you said your prayers I'm aiming for your life but it was not Hannah when I turned was John Hannah's wife. She was an angel, she would take your breath away. She said, I'll haunt you if you lay him in clay. They all mounted without speaking, started back for right a boo. For I'd rather would be haunted by the ghost of Thirst Joe. And I ain't known as a sentimental man. Put the past behind me just as quickly as I can. I still see the way she looked as I began to go And night times I describe it to the ghost of Thirst Joe Night times I describe it to my old friend Thirst Joe Those are all mine, yes. Guitar coming through okay? If you ever come back to Georgia, Honey, don't you wait too long, too long. If you ever come back to Georgia, Honey, don't you wait too long, too long. Wait until next summer.
tell them that I'm well and doing fine. And if you see my brother, I'll tell him that I'm well and doing fine. If you see my mama, ask her where she's been this long, long time. Now, if you ever come back to Georgia, honey, don't you wait too long, too long. You wait too long, too long. Wait until next summer. You might come round and I'll be gone. I'll be gone. I'll be gone. Now comes the grand finale, where we shoot off hundreds of fireworks all at the same time.